Hi, I'm Javier Gomez Lavin. I'm an assistant professor here at the Department of Philosophy and the incoming director of our Punks and Vray Labs at Purdue University. A lot of, if we think of AIs as generally as tools, tools have this disposition, this potential for danger, but they're usually unlocked as dangerous things when they're interacted with by people in bad ways. And the good thing is that we've done 2,500 years of research on how people should interact at least in better ways, even if we don't have a full ethical theory of that yet. And so, in some sense, I think the work needs to be done on the norms, the habits, the prescriptions, the rules, the regulations even, that we have around how people interact with AIs. So students are using ChatGPT all the time now, and in some sense we have to think about what are the new norms, what are the new rules, what are the new habits, what are the new ways that we want people to perceive and interact with these devices. Just like I'm sure a lot of teachers freaked out about calculators in the 70s when they got pocket-sized. And you know there was this long-standing battle of whether do we allow them, when do we allow them. And then, you know, it's going to be patchwork. And I think it's going to be very similar for how we deal with AIs. But kind of learning from these lessons, I think now, early now, is the time to put in the energy to figure out with human AI interaction, what, are, what do we want it to look like? How do we want this collaborative future to be where it can augment us? where it can actually help us do some tedious work, where it's available to many people and it's not guarded by a precious few, um, where it allows creative potential to happen, but where we have rules to kind of guard against its misuse. That's the conversation we need to have now. We don't necessarily have a good idea of what intelligence is. So Edwin Boring, great name, he was a historian of psychology. He used to say that intelligence is just whatever intelligence tests measure. My sense is we probably have many different kinds of intelligences. So what kids do is different than what groups do, which is different than what animals do, which is different than what we do perceptually, which is different than what we do logically. And in some of these dimensions, AIs already have us beat, but in many others, they don't. And so it's kind of, we have to have a richer sense of the tapestry of intelligences to be able to map on, okay, where is AI actually performing well and where isn't it? Um, rather than just kind of putting it all together as a kind of scary, boogeyman, if you will.